Given all the horrors of the Holocaust, whose echoes have such potence today, the existence of music in the concentration camps is not widely known. But a young British composer's research into these so-called orchestras of Auschwitz led him to remarkable discovery. Fragments of sheet music, many incomplete or burnt, largely untouched since the camp's liberation. Well, tonight, the premier performance of his painstaking project to piece them together. There's an eerie contrast between the upbeat notes played and the dire circumstances they were played in. Unnoticed for 80 years, composer and conductor Leo Geyer stumbled upon a collection of musical manuscripts during a visit to Auschwitz seven years ago. He set about painstakingly restoring some of the more than 200 pieces. It's a challenge. So. In part, it's because I have an understanding of the music of that time. What I can also do is to cross-reference some of this music with testimonies to find out which musicians were playing at which time and therefore piece together with those broken manuscripts to try and see if I can work out what it was like. And of course, I have been spending some time with uh, survivors such as Anita Lasker-Valfish, who is one of the survivors of the Women's Orchestra in Auschwitz, now 97 years old. Anita played the cello in one of the orchestras of Auschwitz. Her grandson Simon is part of tonight's performance, revisiting some of the sounds that would have streamed through the camp run by the Nazis in the 1940s. The primary purpose of the orchestras was to play marching music for the prisoners, but it often extended beyond just that. They also played for SS parties, they also played for openings of new areas of the camps, but also they played for themselves, often secretly, and this was seen as a, a chink of daylight in the darkness. And they did something with the national anthem as well, didn't they? So certainly one of the things that happened with the orchestras is that a melody might be woven into the marching music to send some kind of secret message to the musicians and indeed to the prisoners. We call that a musical cryptogram. And an example of that is the Polish national anthem, which was woven into these melodies. And of course, that gave Polish prisoners a real sense of strength and courage. <laughs> As the number of Holocaust survivors becomes ever smaller, music that was previously forgotten is helping to make sure that their stories never are. Rishi Davda, News at 10.